Welcome to another episode of the UX Unicorns Podcast. Guys, I appreciate you for um, subscribing, following along, listening in your car, at work, your headphones. I don't really know, but I, that's what I hope you guys do is listen to those places there. <laughs> um, for those of you who are, you know, are like watching the podcast, you can kind of see some things got a little different. Um, we went shopping. <laughs> well, I went shopping to uh, IKEA. So as you can see, the, the 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 whole format looks a little different now. So now I have my desk in the background. That is my um, production area where I get all my work done. And then I get went to IKEA and I got like an actual desk. Um, for those of you on this camera over here, you can kind of see the new setup where I got the I got the desk here, I got the nice little plant here, I got the camera set up, and I got the background pointed out this way. So I'll show that angle so you guys can check that out. For those of you who are listening on audio only, make sure you go to Ugly Unicorn's YouTube channel, check it out, and you'll be able to see it there. But I'll just what I so what I want to know is how was your week? <laughs> How was everybody's week? You know, um, my week was pretty good. I would I would say for the most part, it was sort of a slow week. Doing a lot of things as far as um, UX wise, like creating um, discussion guides. Cause we're gonna be doing some user testing here and here later in the month. So we're creating a discussion guide for that for like what questions we want to ask our user base. As far as the as far as the concept that we came up with. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to weave in this third party software into our application. And we kind of want to know, you know, how that's going to work and function for the users, you know, whether or not this process is going to, you know, speed things up for them, or is it going to inc help increase accuracy when helping taking the application. So that's kind of what we're doing now. I can't get into too much details about it, but I can kind of talk about the process, you know, what we do is. So traditionally when you creating these, um, discussion guides um, from, from my experience it's like you create this like little word document right but you know word documents you know they're, they're only worth their weight in the only worth their weight in gold right so um, the guy I was working with he had an idea to was like hey you know since since COVID is a thing and we can't really interact with people because usually when we do these discussion guides and we can present in person with what we what we want but since everything is remote and, um, you know, our stakeholders, we, they're pretty much our audience. So we, we want to, we want to cater to our audience. So, excuse me. So, um, they want, okay. To, so basically they are sort of like matter of fact or sort of literal type of people, right? They don't really, I'm not gonna say they don't have an imagination, but sometimes you have to guide them in the direction to say like, "Hey, this is, this is what it could be." You just want to help, you know, put those pictures and pieces together for them in their mind. Um, this is it's it's sort of a skill, but most people can't really imagine certain things. So what we did is we took our discussion guide and we basically um, formatted it in a way to where like. It's 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 a hybrid of a, a discussion guide and a findings document. So basically, we take our our screens that we're gonna you know, you know, ask people like certain questions on. We put those into the PowerPoint along with the questions that we want to ask them, right? And so while we're going through our um, our mockup, we'll be able to see the exact screen we're talking about. Could we, could we have this? We have the mockup. We will have the the PowerPoint pulled up while we're talking to these people on Zoom, but they can't see that. They can only see the prototype, but we can see. I keep hitting the microphone. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, I talk with my hands a lot, so um, we're gonna have our we're gonna have our um, our PowerPoint up as well as the person who's um, presenting and facilitating will have the thing up, and then the person who's scribing will be able to describe also inside that thing. And so while you're going along. It's just easier to, to capture uh, information, you know, screen by screen in in that um, discussion guide hybrid type of deal. That way, when you go together and put your um, your your findings document together, it's just so freaking quick. Because pretty much you've done like ninety percent of the work 
already for your findings document. All you have to do now is just make sure you answer those questions, you get down, you just answer them fully, you, you capture everything that you're using, not everything, but what you need to capture from your user base. Man, smooth sailing, man. Smooth sailing. That process alone has saved us so much time. So pro tip on that, when you're doing these, um, if you're doing these, um, you know, uh, discussion guides for your prototype and you're trying to do some testing, try to do a hybrid approach. Try to do a hybrid approach. Um, it, it works really well. But that's not what I want to talk about today, honestly. That's just a little pro tip, little pro tip. I kind of got off tangent. I don't even know how I even got to that. But, oh, yeah, I was just talking about my week. Yeah, my week was pretty good just doing that. And then, um, oh, yeah, last night or yesterday, I went to a uh, NFC match, uh, jiu-jitsu competition, and um, it did not disappoint. <laughs> it did not disappoint. And it was very confusing how they did the brackets, but um, – Basically, what they had, they had white belt. This is all no gi, by the way. So they have like um, advanced. So it went from white, it's white belt to purple belt, under seventy five, and then over seventy five, and that was a bracket. So a white belt could be competing against a purple belt, and vice versa. And you know, if you're not a savvy white belt, you might get crushed by that purple belt. <laughs> Or even a savvy blue belt. You know, you, sometimes a savvy blue belt could catch a purple belt. It's, sometimes it just happens that way. And um, so they had the brackets for that. Then they had the pro. Then they had the brackets for the women, which was um, they didn't have many uh, female signups. So they just did an absolute. And the person who won was a blue belt, and she went up against a purple belt. She pretty much killed it. She's she's pretty pretty good. She's pretty good. And then for they also had a, a championship match for. Um, like brown the black belt so that was like the the pro league so over 36 had the championship the guy who actually won was a doctor and his dude was jacked <laughs> i'm talking about jack i've never seen a doctor so jack i'm like he looked like a bodybuilder he was probably i would say around 50 or 60 years old uh people were, it was it was very interesting because like he's a he's a jujitsu black belt right and he's also a doctor. He's also the doctor for the NFC. So he was competing as well as helping people out. Almost like, <laughs> this guy can help you, but can also put you to sleep. It was pretty interesting. And one guy got his eye cut, and he had to, like, come over and help him out. So that was, that was I was like, is that is that the doctor, too? Like, did he just win the championship? Did, he's a black belt, too? Wow. Talk about goals. Talk about Talk about a badass, man. You're so badass that you could literally take somebody out and save somebody's life in the same day. <laughs> like, I'm talking about jujitsu and self defense wise. I mean, if you guys have not, look, if you guys never tried jujitsu, I recommend that you try jujitsu. Jujitsu will change your life, not only from a um, self defense standpoint or a physical standpoint, from a self-confidence standpoint, um, I would say my, my self-confidence has grown exponentially from taking jujitsu. You know, I was very insecure, um, didn't know how to fight, didn't know how to defend myself, didn't know how to protect my family, but jujitsu has definitely, like, whew, mellowed me out because, like, man, I was I was a hothead. I had a, had a temper. I still got a slight temper. Not, not as bad, though. Not as bad as I used to be when I was like 17, still in high school. I would just pop off. Boom, 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 boom. Why? Because the scary dog barks the loudest. And that was me. And so jujitsu definitely um, definitely helped me out a lot in that aspect. And also jujitsu really puts things in perspective for me as far as like when I'm in my career and I think about, you know, I'm nervous or I'm afraid to present or this and that. I just think back and like, you know what? Why am I so afraid to speak to people when I literally go to jujitsu class and get beat up and get choked out, get my arms extended? Like, why am I afraid to to talk to people over Zoom? Right? It just puts things that, to me. It makes sense. Like, it puts things in a lot. It puts things in perspective for me. I'm just like. What are you what are you afraid of? Like, why are you you literally every day, well not every day, 
three times a week, you go to class and you have a fight. And you leave and you're and you're smiling. And to me, that it just it just puts things into perspective for me. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you do martial arts. I don't know if you have that mindset as like me, but it also like keeps me disciplined as well. It makes me not get so anxious as well. Cause I just think back to that. I'm just like, calm down, breathe. You got arm barred last night. <laughs> or calm down, breathe. You just real naked chucked the blue belt last night. It's fine. <laughs> you can't see I'm doing a move. But yeah, man, jujitsu puts things a lot, puts things in perspective for me. It makes me less nervous as in my career because I look at these people and like, you know, I'm nervous for what? Like these people can't hurt me. So what is there to be worried about? The only thing you're worried about is what people think of you. And if that's what you're worried about, then you need to take jujitsu class because You'll get over that pretty quickly. I'm not going to say you're going to get over it totally, but it will definitely help you out. You're, you're going to be like, why do I care what people think? You can't do anything to me that would worry me. And that's it. There's nothing you could do to me that would make me worry. There was nothing you can do to me that would make me afraid of you. Unless you had a, a gun or something. But the, it, was, it was speaking of hypotheticals at this point, so... That's how I, that's how I think, and that's how I look at it. I'm like, yeah, this is this is fine. This is good. This is what I do to YouTube as well. It helps me, you know, talk and you know be able to think on my feet. And I also used to rap in, in in college too. So being able to freestyle rap and come up with things off the top of the dome, like I've always had that. I've been doing that since I was 16. So um, being able to like you know pop off and, and answer questions off the top. That's that, That's been very helpful. It's a lot of things that you do in your past that can really help you in your current state. Even if you don't really think about it, you just think about like, oh man, I used to do that. Oh, that's where that came from. At 16, I used to rap and I used to freestyle. So I used to want me a bit to put words and sentences together pretty quickly. Oh, I get it. That makes sense. That makes sense. But um, anyway... The competition was awesome. Oh, dude, this is guy there. Um, he got he got disqualified, and I'm gonna tell you how it happened. <laughs> so, this is um, this high level uh, competitor, uh, Tex Johnson. There, I promise we're gonna get to some UX stuff. I'm just, you, all right. I told you guys when you signed up for this, you're gonna hear a lot of topics besides UX. You you already knew this. You already knew this. But anyway, this is guy there. Um, Named Tex Johnson. Tex Johnson is a high level competitor, black belt, no gi. He fought Gordon Ryan before, some other high level guys. And um, he comes to this NFC event. We're like, is that is that Tex Johnson? We're like, what why is he even here? It was it was so it was just so weird. It's like seeing Brad Pitt at like Red Lobster. Like, why are you here? Why? <laughs> It's just a weird situation, but it was cool. I was, like, right behind. I took a photo, but I'm, like, a fanboy because I don't really know him that much. But anyway, so he had his first match. His first match um, literally lasted 19, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Finished the guy by knee bar. I was like, dang, this guy's the legit. He just came in here, finished this guy with a knee bar. 20 seconds. I was like, damn, he's going to win the championship. He's going to he's he's going to win. He's going to win the whole thing. And uh, so come the fast forward, we, we, everybody's doing their semifinal rounds down to the quarterfinal rounds and all the other jazz. So he gets down to the to the round where I think it's the um, the semifinals where if he wins this one, he goes to the, the finals. Right. And so he's grappling this dude and this other guy is like freaking J -j 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 jacked. I'm talking about Jack, bro. I was like, is this the the Spanish Fabio? Like, I don't know. Is Fabio Spanish? I don't know. But this dude had long hair and it's freaking Jack. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> He's gonna be trouble. And he was a little trouble. He was he was giving Tex Johnson some fits. And um it was crazy. And and as um, one situation happened where um the Jack guy, Fabio, Fabio, his real name's not Fabio. I just don't remember his name, but freaking Fabio. <laughs> Fabio stands up. He's he's uh, defending a takedown that Tex is trying to put on. 
And I don't know why. I don't know why Tex Johnson did this, but he he just did not stop. He knew he was out of bounds, right? You know you're out of bounds. Freaking stop. I don't think the ref needs to, to step in and say, hey, man, uh, once you stop driving for this takedown, you're not even on the mat. But anyways, he drives, and we're in this gym, and the gym's not that big of a place, and it had this wall, and it's white, and there's people around, you know what I'm saying? And, like, the wall is literally, you, you, you see where I'm going. The wall is literally, like, uh, five, three to five feet from the mat, maybe. Maybe. And freaking Tex Johnson is driving in on this takedown. And he and those two guys just hit the wall. Bam! I was like, huh. Oh my God, guys. It look it looked and sounded like a freaking car crash. This dude, Fabio. Fabio, um, dude, he got his whole back just smashed. He hit that wall like bang. He was like, smack. I was like, oh shit. I was like, dang. And Tex freaking Johnson was just like smirking like a jerk off. He's like, yeah, yeah, I just hurt that guy. I don't care. I'm like, dude, why would you do that? It's only $2,000. Like, what are we doing here? You can go make that somewhere else. I don't know, Tex Johnson. Why would you, why would you, why would you spear somebody into a wall at a local competition? I don't understand that. Like, his ego. Maybe, maybe I don't. I, I can't speak for the man, but maybe his ego got in the way where he he was like, "Man, I'm not able to finish these guys at these local competitions. I'm Tex Johnson. I'm, I fought Gordon Ryan at the highest level. I should be able to come in here and take out these Atlanta people." But he wasn't able to. That guy was giving him some Fabio was giving him problems, right? And his I, th- I think his ego got in the way of it. And he freaking speared that guy into the wall. It was the worst thing I've ever seen and the kind of the saddest thing I've ever seen. I was just like, wow. But at, but at first I was like, at first I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, you know what you signed up for? You knew the you knew that you knew that wall was there two feet away. Like, you knew this could happen, right? And so that Fabio, Fabio's coach was uh just, just like DQ. DQ, DQ. I was like, nah, man, don't DQ him, man. That's bull crap, man. Come on, be a be a be a Spartan, Fabio. Like, step back in there. But Fabio was hurt, man. He was sitting there on the ground, like shaking his head, wiping his forehead. I think his back got jacked up. Just being honest. So you never know, man. With that type of with that type of stuff, dude, like I hope he went to the chiropractor or something, because he hit that wall hard but anyways <clears throat> jujitsu is very fun and very scary and dangerous at the same time in the hands of the wrong people and you know i find out i find that to be a very interesting thing like a people with a lot of ego and in, in jujitsu are probably the, some of the worst training partners um you'll ever see they're great competitors don't get me wrong like those people go out to to win and they, they do well because that's their mindset. Their mindset is like, I always want to win. And that's a good mindset to have if you're a competitor, but it's a horrible mindset if you're a training partner and you're trying to, you know, get better and make your people around you better. But when you have that, when you have that ego and you're always like, I gotta win, I just gotta win, I gotta win, it makes people not want to you know, train with you and not want to be around you. And the same goes in the same course. And the same goes for people who are in the workplace who just have to like win, like get that last word in, you know, make sure that they that they are perfect and nothing's ever nothing's ever their fault type of situation because if it is their fault that means they're losing and they're not winning. So they have to win. And that ego is huge. And when you have an ego like that, guys, it will either, it can make you good in your career if you know how to tame that and channel that thing. But if you let that thing run loose and wild like a freaking wild animal, it can ruin you. Um, Because 
you realize quick that you have less training partners or people don't invite you to parties or people don't invite you out to the bar after work. Like you have to check that crap at the door. And the reason why I bring up ego and, and to bring it back full circle was when I first started at my new job, <clears throat> you know, I I had a little bit of that where I was I was presenting and doing things like that. And I was just I was just getting a little worked up, a little worked up. I mean, I wouldn't say like upset, but like I was like, why are you guys, why are you guys, why why do you ask that question? That makes no sense. Like what is what I'm presenting not making any sense to you? Like it this is what this was going on in my mind, right? And why was this going on in my mind? Well, one, I'm too close to the project. So when I'm explaining things, I'm not being open, right? I'm just like I'm presenting you the project, but I'm 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 just presenting to you. I'm not I was I wasn't really necessarily looking for that feedback, right? But I had to switch it because my ego got in the way. And I was like, okay, it's me. It's not them, right? If, if I'm presenting in a way to where, um, well, my manager said this too. He's like, maybe you're presenting in a way to where like you come off as a, a, a more friendlier person. You're able to, you know, make people feel more comfortable asking questions, whereas someone else might not, you know, have that, have that feel. So like, let's say me, I'm, I'm presenting something versus like the CEO, Right. Me and the CEO can present the exact same thing, the exact same words, but he might get less questions at the end because, you know, he's the CEO. He's that he's that figure of authority. And and I'm I'm not that not not that I'm not not that I'm less important than him. It's just like maybe I come off a little more friendly, a little more kind or a little more open to 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 certain individuals. Right. Who feel more comfortable with me. Comfortable comfortable with me so when he said that i was like okay that makes sense man that makes sense um but at the same time like i was like dude i gotta check my ego at the door my ego has <laughs> got me in trouble <laughs> so many times you have no idea we, we've all been there man we've all been there and ego ego is big man ego ego is one of those things where you know, it can have you, you know, second guessing yourself. It can have you, you know, distancing people from you because, you know, maybe you don't pick up on certain things that they pick up on. You're like, man, you're a jerk and I don't want to train with you for one. And I don't want to invite you out to my freaking birthday party too. So yeah, ego, ego's huge. I don't know if this podcast is about ego, but it just, when I think about what happened to that Tex Johnson situation, and I was like, man, his his ego got in the way. His ego was so bad that he was willing to hurt somebody. Like, hurt, hurt somebody. Not on the mat where you're supposed to do it, where you're using your technique and your ability and all the skill that you learned over the years as a black belt. Like, he was trying to spear a guy through the wall like freaking the juggernaut. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. If you ever seen X-Men, that's a pretty cool movie. But anyway... He was willing to actually hurt that man. He could that dude could have had a, like a concussion, could hurt his back, and he hit. He could anything could have happened. I don't know if you ever been slammed into a wall before, but I'm, it doesn't feel very good. It doesn't feel very nice. And if you sign up for a competition, that's not what you sign up for because when you're on that, when you're competing, you're on a mat, a mat, man, a mat, a foam padded mat, probably about two inches thick. If you get slammed on that, it does not hurt. I mean, it hurts if you fall wrong, but it doesn't. It really doesn't really hurt. It doesn't really hurt, right? But if you're getting speared into a freaking cinder block wall, that hurts. You didn't sign up for that, and I understand why you got DQ'd. Maybe I was in my gladiator mode. Blood, blood, sweep the leg, Johnny. Like maybe I was in that mode, you know what I'm saying? But like now that that happened is like the thing back. I'm like, dude, that was not a good situation. His ego got in the way and he deserved to get disqualified because he got up and he was like smirking. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end of it, he goes to try to shake his coach's hand. His coach is like, no, man, fuck off. You're a dick. I don't want to, I don't want to shake your hand. Like you just, you did that on purpose. It wasn't an accident. You could have stopped your follow through. You could have been like, all right, cool. I see them. I see the mats coming up. 
maybe I'll stop because his head was on the inside of the guy's body. So like not on the outside. If he would have hit his head, he would have speared him. He would have hit his head too, but he knew he was doing. So he had his head on the inside and he was going in. And when you're doing that, you can see the ground. You can see like, oh, sh- oh crap. Uh, there's the edge of the mat. I think I'll stop my momentum. But he didn't do that. He just kept going. Boom. I was like, dang. <sighs> it wasn't good. But anyway, moving forward into. <laughs> so anyway, my week was good. I hope your guys' week was good. You know, you know, comment down below. Tell me how your week was. You know, maybe we can get you on the podcast. We can talk. But anyway, yeah, man. Everything's going to be good. Next week is going to be interesting as well. I'm looking forward to some certain things. We're going to try to, I think we're going to um, try to recruit some people for our user test. It's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to, going to be facilitating that, maybe subscribing as well. But I really do like facilitating more than taking notes. I suck at taking notes. I hate taking notes. I would rather just not do it. I would rather I would rather talk and then you take notes. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. But um, anyways, the reason why the reason why I wanted to do, initially do this podcast was because, um, you know, ego ego's a good one. Maybe I'll do a real, real podcast on the ego part. But what I really wanted to talk about was, maybe this, maybe this could tie into it, but it's um, designers' obsession with tools. You know, why do designers have this huge obsession with you know, the type of tools that, that are out there, the type of tools that they use or that somebody else is using. And I don't know, is it, do people think that the tools really do make the work better? What What do you guys think about that? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, from my perspective, as a former graphic designer, I think that we made a big deal of tools. To, I mean, we kind of, I kind of make a big deal of tools sometimes, but you know, in in retrospect, it doesn't really matter what what tool you use. The outcome is what matters. You know, pointing back to that why is what matters. Getting that functionality, you know, really good for your for your users is really what matters. But you can say all that, Eric. But we still want to know: is it Sketch, is it XD, or is it Figma? Which one is it, bro? Which one is it, bro? Look, you know what, guys? You know, this whole this whole great debate on, you know, different types of programs and different types of, you know, applications that are out there to help you get to a result. I hate to say this, but at the end of the day, they're all they're all gonna give you the same result, right? It's just the it's just the path or the means of doing it is just slightly different. But these, those three programs are essentially the same. They are essentially the same. I got I get a que- I got a question on in on LinkedIn. You know what programs do you use? I got a question on Instagram. What programs do you use? I got a question on YouTube. Hey man, what program do you use? Do you what do you think about Figma? What do you think about XD? What do you think about Sketch? Well, I'm going to tell you. All right, guys. But first, I kind of I wanted to see how many freaking like design tools out there that UXers could do. I guess these are most of the visual ones. But I pulled up Webflow blog here. It's um seventeen useful UX UI tools. <sighs> Don't get me on that UX UI tangent. I really hate that that job title. You know, I used to use that job title, um, UI UX. I think it really I think it really takes away from what we really do as as UX user experience designers when you just lump in the UI thing. Like <sighs> user experience is this great big ball of greatness. And then you're just gonna just tack on the UI part thing. Like, yes, UI is a part of the UX the experience. I don't consider myself a UI UX designer. I consider myself a UX designer, a user experience designer, and I do some UI when I need to, right? Or I do research when I need to, or I do prototyping when I need to. It just it shouldn't be whatever whatever these jobs, you know. Don't get me off the rails, guys. Eric, stay focused. But anyway, I want to come and I want to kind of go through this and look at 17 useful tools for UI UX. Ugh. 
And this is a blog from Webflow. Um, not, they are not sponsored to this podcast by any means. But I just want to. I just want to run through, and I wanted to see how how many of these tools I even recognize. And then I want you to guy. I want you guys to like. Oh yeah, use that one. Heard of that one? Never heard of that one. Like, give me your reaction. Let me know if you heard of it. If you heard of one or if not all on this list. All right, so let's get into it. So number one, I don't think this is in any particular order, but number one was Sketch. Two, Envision Studio. Three, Axer. Four, Craft. Five, Proto.io. Never heard of that one. Six, Adobe XD. Yep. Seven, Marvel. Eight, Figma. Holla. Uh, nine, Framer X. Ten, Omni. Ogmi. <laughs> oh, Origami Studio. Bro, I can't spell. I can't read <laughs> today. <laughs> It's been a long week. Uh, you know what? I, I, you know, I went to the jujitsu competition, guys. I stood for three hours. I'm tired. Anyways, let's get back to this. Uh, that was number 10 was um, Origami Studio. Never heard of that one. Number 11, Webflow. I'm surprised it was the number one because it's a Webflow blog. Anyways, uh, number 12, Flow Map with two Ps. Not one, but two Ps. Flow Map. Um... Never heard of that one. Interesting. Looks like something interesting. Uh, number 13, Balsamic. 14, Visual Sitemaps. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, to your audience. Um, here's, a, <laughs> here's an interesting one. Number 15, TreeJack. Yep. Not going to go on that one. <laughs> I hate your name, bro. TreeJack. <laughs> go away, Jack. Go climb that tree. Anyway, number 16, wireframe.cc. I wonder what that one's for. I wonder what I wonder what I wonder what wireframe CC does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, and number 17 was um Optimal Workshop. Um, Optimal Workshop is a good tool for card sorting or to if you're trying to figure out. How do you want to put together like a like your site map for your website or your navigation? That was I use that one. That was a pretty good one. Um, some other ones in here that I don't see was like Miro or Mural. Those are two different things. Um, yeah, I don't I don't see those particular ones. Those are more like whiteboarding things. But these are more um, I see as wireframing and prototyping tools, but then they have freaking optimal workshop. Don't know how that one fits in. I don't, I don't know how that one fits into this list, but anyway, it's there and I read them off. You know, how, how many of these um, tools have you guys used? How many, how many of these tools have you guys heard of? Does it matter? <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. Guys, listen, if you heard of one or 17 of these different tools, it does not matter why. Because outcome is income. Boom. Hey, chicka, chicka. chicka. All right. I'm just joking. That was a Jay-Z line. No, honestly, look, outcome is income. And at the end of the day, like <sighs> Sketch, Adobe XD, and Figma, those are, those are the big ones I get questions on. Guys, those, those um, um, they don't really matter because, listen, there's a story coming. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know already, there's a story coming, and here comes Eric talking with his hands again. Look at me, look at me. Spirit fingers. Anyway, so um let me give you a let me give you a fun story. So back when I was taking the um boot camp course at Springboard, you know, I've I've dabbled in the Design programmer too, you know, having a 10-year design career. I've dabbled. I've used some Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, all the all the things, right? And so, you know, what's the best like UX, UI, and you know, I hate that one, but I have to use it for this context, type of software to use. And so because I was already in the Adobe land, Adobe land, Adobe land. Why do I sound like a leprechaun just then? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, since I was already in Adobe Land, I was like, you know what? 
You know why? <laughs> why do I sound like a, a, a Ugg boot wearing, PSL drinking Valley girl just then? I don't know. But anyways, I love pumpkin spice lattes. If you can send me some, let me know. UglyUnicorns.com. Uh, anyway, um, so I was like, since I'm already in Adobe land, I was like, man, I'm going to use this adobe xd and i was like this this program is pretty nice it's it's pretty clean in my mind it talks to all the other programs it talks to illustrator it talks to photoshop well you can drag and drop different components inside of it i was like man this is pretty dope i really like this and so i was like i'm gonna go 100 doing that right so then the course they're like yo you probably want to use Sketch, man, because, you know, in Sketch, you know, a lot of companies use it because, you know, Sketch was here first. Okay, I'm a surfer now. Sketch was here first, man, and, like, you know, they were first to the market. A lot of a lot of companies have their whole, like, design system and the built on it, man, so you might want to learn it, man. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I think I'm going to learn a Sketch one. And so, like, I, I literally opened up Sketch. I was like, I hate this program, dude. It's like, it looks janky. It looks cheap. Like, it's it's laggy as hell. Like, I just, I just, mm, I just did not like using it. And, you know, this is my own preference. Like, I've tried it, and, and I was like, I don't like using this. And so, I was all in on Adobe XD. And so, when I got my, my, my first UX job, um, they don't use Adobe XD. They pay for it, but they don't use it. Don't know why that is, but um, we're that's a that's a that's a tangent that I won't get on today. So um, they don't use XD, but they pay for it. Whole different whole different podcast, right? And so um, the man, I was like, "Yo, why you guys don't use XD?" And uh, I'm you know you hired me to do this. I'm a UI designer. Like I like I like it. It's uncomfortable. Like manager's like, "Well, I'm a sketch guy." Okay, um, you're not the one designing the wireframes or the prototypes, so why does it matter to you? <laughs> but anyway, um, that's a that's a whole nother podcast, guys. But anyway, so he's a sketch guy, so we use Sketch, we use Sketch, and I did not use Sketch. I've only used Adobe XD. I've opened Sketch. I made a circle or two in Sketch, but I have not made a button. Pro- I have not put together a wireframe, prototype, or anything within Sketch. And I had to learn Sketch in a week. <laughs> I had to learn Sketch in a week. Uh, some of you are like, dude, that's a, that's a long time, bro. Or some of you are like, wow, you got that pretty fast, bro. I'm going to go with the last one. I'm going to go with the last one and say, oh, you got that pretty fast, man. You know, ego. Look, you see how I'm, you see how I'm chaining up? Look, you see how I'm chaining all my, my topics in my podcast so I can make it cohesive? Because <laughs> it's not just rambling. It probably is rambling. But anyway, this is why you're here, man. This is you like unicorns, baby. We doing our thing. Yeah, I got to sing every podcast. You know, I do. I'm trying to get that record deal. Holla at me, Simon Cow. Anyway. So I had to learn Sketch in a week. And, you know, how did that go? Well, it went pretty well. Um, because like I said before, these programs, guys, they're they're basically the same. It's just little things, just little things are different, right? Just certain workflows are different. But essentially, the, like 90% is basically the same, right? And so that's how I was able to pick up Sketch so quickly. And, you know, if I didn't have a Mac, I wouldn't be able to use Sketch at all. So that's one thing that reason why I like Adobe XD is because it you can use it on Linux. I think you can use it on um, Windows and Mac. So you don't have to go out and buy a freaking, you know, uh, a freaking three thousand dollar laptop just to use Sketch. That would be that would be the probably the worst investment. Well, not the worst investment if you're alive, but if you never got a career in UX and you did that, it's probably not a good investment. But it probably is a good investment if you are going in that direction. But I don't recommend buying a three thousand thousand laptop just to learn how to use a ninety nine dollar program. 
Just saying. Just use Adobe XD. It's free. Whatever. Anyway, so that's the reason why I said um, these these kind of things don't really matter, man. It's like once you know one, you pretty much know all. And people are like, what do you what do you mean by that? Because I've already told you, it's they're the same. And the reason why I bring that story is because because I knew one program, I was able to pick up the other one pretty quickly. And my current job, we use Sketch now. You know what I'm saying? And so like it's it's whatever. I use Adobe XD whenever I design work for myself. I use Sketch at work or I use Figma or whatever because they're interchangeable, guys. They're interchangeable. And I don't want you guys, especially you new, especially you new designers, you new, you fresh UXers out there, um, trademark, um, you fresh UXers out there, like, hey, don't get so caught up in the programs and and different things like that. That that's that's low on the totem pole. Like, don't even worry about that stuff. Like, find one that you like, find one that you enjoy, invest all your time into that one. And when it comes time to getting a job somewhere and they use a program that you don't use, that's fine. I mean, you'll pick it up within like a couple of hours because it's essentially the same. And a lot of people, a lot of places will be like, well, you know, I just don't know which one that my company wants. I'm like, well, it says on the freaking job description, bruh. If it says Adobe, if it says Adobe CC, they're, they're probably using just Photoshop or Illustrator. But if it says Adobe CC and then Sketch, you probably know that they're going to be using Sketch for the UI work, right? So just read the freaking job description, and then once you go to that job, you already and you can just practice while you, before you even get there. That's fine too. Like, but at the same time, like, don't worry about Sketch versus XD, XD versus Figma, Figma versus Sketch. Like, it does really freaking matter, and that's pretty much. What I really want to talk about is that, you know, I just don't want you guys to get hung up on the different types of softwares because it happens a lot. You guys don't even understand. Like, I could put out, a, I could put out a um an, uh, uh, a design and people are like, hey, what you use to make that in? Like, that doesn't mean you're gonna be able to make what I make. Just so you know that, right? I just want to. I'm not being a jerk or whatever, but I'm just letting you know, like. Just because I make something that looks a certain way with a certain program doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do the exact same thing as me. You could be, you could do it better or you could do it worse. This the artist who makes the, who makes, who masters the tool, not the tool who masters the artist. You feel me? So that's all I have to say about that, man. I mean, it's probably more I want to say. But, you know, I got to keep it rated PG-13. No, it's rated R. Fabio. <laughs> I just love saying Fabio. But, yeah, man, like, I, I get that a lot. Or like a lot of, I, I talk to, like, a lot of, like, fresh UXs out there who are hitting me up on LinkedIn. You know, we get on these Zoom calls. And, you know, a lot of them, um, you know, they don't have a design background. So a lot of them do struggle in the design department. Look, I'm not saying, like... Your UI work, you don't have to work on that. I'm just saying, like, you don't have to worry about what program to use. But at the end of the day, you definitely need to get your UI work up. Man, I've seen some portfolios out there. And um, I'm going to say, hey, guys, companies are looking for people who can design. Let me say it again. Companies are looking for people who can design. <clears throat> and... You know, I know they say like, oh, you know, design, it's not that important. It's all about the functionality of the user. Yes, this is true. This is 100% true. But because design is such a, um, this is going to sound so bad. So since design is such a low on the totem pole type of work, in my eyes, I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. So like, it's just easy to me and mm, mindless. Uh, <laughs> it's it's so, it, Especially when you have a design system in place, it's so easy to just drag and drop and do your thing. But you don't, because it's, because it's such a low on the total type of deal, it's the easiest to 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 get quick wins with. 
You know what I'm saying? Like it's the easiest to come in and and kill it with. Cause that's what I did. I came in to to this department here, and you know some some stuff is already predefined and determined. And so I, I was able to come in and just and just knock things out quickly. Like boom, 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 boom. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Because you know these stakeholders, they needed to see these mockups. They needed to see these prototypes. They needed to see these things. And I was able to do those things fairly quickly because I had that design. Because I had that design knowledge. Right. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying, like, if you guys can come into a company, right, and they need, and you want to get a quick win, like, it's probably going to be something, like, design-related, just to be honest with you. If you can come in there and, like, all right, I got a wireframe up, boom, I'm going to come in here and make this little prototype, boom, quick win, bam. Oh, Snoopy, this is awesome. Let's let's present this. Let's show this. Let's see this option. Can we get another option? Cool. Those are the quick wins, man. And those were like, you know, those, and those type of things will help establish you with, with your people, right? You you build that rapport with them, like, oh, he's, you know, he, he comes in, he made an impact immediately, and that's what companies look for, like, maybe not all companies, but if you can come in and make an immediate impact into a team, and team members take that notice, and it's a positive impact, man, life is golden. Living my life like it's golden, golden. <laughs> life is golden, man. It's like. I'm not saying, I'm not saying everybody has to do this. I'm not saying that everybody's going to do this. I'm not saying everybody can do this, but it's something that I did that I noticed that helps out. Um, even even on my last gig, um, we were interviewing some some designers. Right, we interviewed like four or five UX designers. Right, and there was there was this one. It was down to you know, one designer A and designer B, right? Designer A, you know, strong design skills, strong UI skills, strong visual skills. You know, maybe maybe his, maybe their UX, his or her UX wasn't like the strongest as their visuals, but man, it looked good, right? Like we could teach you the other stuff. We can we can work on the UX stuff, right? You know, designer B. You know, great UX person, you know, good thinker, but their but their design skills were mm, what they weren't the best. They were not the best. And that's that I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That's that's a hard skill to teach and on the world on the job. Like I I tried. It's it's hard to take somebody from zero to amazing. When you just only when you're only given you know eight hours in a day, and how many hours of that day are you spending working on design? I'm not really sure. Unless you're putting in the extra hours after work on the weekends or at night, maybe. But you know, at the end of the day, we chose designer A, even though designer B was a way better UX person, right? But we knew like, hey, but also designer A had a way better personality, and that resonates with me, like. Great personality. I can work with you. I can get along with you. That goes above and beyond all the other crap because we can teach you the UX side of it and we can try to teach you the, the the visual side of it too. If you have that willingness and openness to want to learn and have a good personality, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll work with you. No, 100%. But if you're a jerk and you're like, oh, I know everything. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to work with you. You got too much ego, <laughs> right? And so that's why I say like, yo... I I I downplay visual design. I always say like it's the low on the totem pole thing because it is, but it is it's still important though. Like it is still important. Like it, that could be the thing that will not get you the job because your visuals don't look that appetizing because people eat with their eyes first, right? Like, yeah, your your website functionality looks great, but it looks like ubu. Uba doo boo. Uba doo boo boo. And so whether whether you guys, I don't know. Maybe you, if some if, look for you for those of you who do not have a strong visual design background, I encourage you, please, just work on it. Work, 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 work on it. And I, I'm not gonna say it's gonna take you ten years. It could. It just depends on your work ethic. Like if you really put that work in to like make that 
that piece that you're weak at stronger, I think you'll be more attractive to to to, to companies, man. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you when when I'm going through um, when I'm going through people's portfolios, dude. I'm not reading all that jargon, man. This that's just me, right? I mean, some people like to read that, but most of the time I'm flipping through, flipping through, flipping through, seeing anything that catches my eye. And most of the time, the things that catch my eye are the visual pieces. And if the visual piece catches my eye, then I might read like, then I might read whatever stuff that you put in there. Like I might read you like, oh, you you surveyed this many people and you got this much data, you collected all that. All because you caught my eye initially because I'm scanning through those portfolios like this. I'm not going to every project. If you have 10 projects in there, don't. This is not design school. Like having 10 of your best projects works if you're like a local designer to see different variety. But man, when you got 10 UX projects in there and each one looks like a freaking Reddit form, bro, I'm not going through that. That's too much. That's probably like 10 hours of my day. I'm probably it's probably gonna take me an hour to get through all that mess, right? So, Eric, what do you what do you recommend? I'm recommending like th- maybe three projects at the most, bro. Three at the most. Like three really good projects. Visuals on point, documentation's on point, research on point, all that stuff is on point. One, because it's, it's three, I don't feel obligated, I don't feel overwhelmed with the amount that you have there. I don't feel like, oh my God, this guy has 10 projects. There's no way. And, and, and amongst that 10 projects, there might only be one or two that are really great. And if I click on a, if I click on one of those projects that are not that great with amongst the 10, I'll pass on you real quick. I'll just pass on you. And I'm like, yeah, I just got, another, just got something good. Like, wait, 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 did you see project number six? No, I didn't. I didn't even see projects one through eight, bruh. So no, I didn't. I did not see project number six, and that and that could kind of hurt you too. It's like one. They always teach us in, in design school: put your best foot forward. I mean, put your best projects forward. And um, I think that goes. I think that reigns true too for um, UX design too. Put your best project forward, even if it's just one project, right? Put that thing in and make it the best. Make it the best project ever. And then if you want to, you can work on the other two. Whatever. But that first one better be a better be a knockout. Because it's most of the time that's the one I'm gonna click on. That second one better be a knockout. That third one better be a knockout. So just in case I click on any one of those freaking projects, they're gonna be awesome no matter what. And yeah, I think I went on a couple of tangents here, guys. But um, at the end of the day, man, what we talk about? We talked about ego. We talked about you know being being worried about different things for no reason. We talked about you know getting up your your, your design skills um, to to make them look to make them better. We talked about design tools and how they don't really matter. Um, all all people care about is the outcome because outcome is income. Income equals money in your pocket to pay your bills so you can have a job and keep the business open, right? So those are a few things that we wanted to talk about. You know, I talked about the week as well. But um, yeah, man, like don't guys, don't don't get obsessed with tools at the end of the day. Like find the one that you like. But I will say, I will say this. There are some tools out there that I like a lot, that I like a lot more than others. I will say that. If I had to rank the tools in my eyes, right, and I go back and forth on one and two, it just depends on my mood. So for me, I'm like, look, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to say all the different nuances of these. But for me, I really do like Adobe XD, number one. I like Figma, number two. Number three, unfortunately, is Sketch. Why is it there? Because I use it. I don't like Sketch. I hate using Sketch, but I have to use Sketch. So uh, the reason why I don't like Sketch because their version control sucks. Their, their, their Sketch Cloud sucks. Um, their ability to co-collaborate sucks. Um, it's laggy as hell. 
There's way too many, way too many abilities to add apps. Like you have to use an app for everything. You have to use an app for, you know, linking it to another program to do a certain thing. You have to have an app for this. You have to have an app for that. Dude, third-party apps, they're not always great, man. One, because it bogs down your system. Two, sometimes they don't even work. Dude, if your workflow depends on an app and that app crashes or doesn't work or that or that app goes out of business, you are a screwdy. You are a screwdy. So think about this. Sketch, you need you need Zeppelin. You need a Zeppelin app to you know be able to download assets, get an inspection tool, get the CSS and all the other ch- the hex codes and all the other jazz, right? <sighs> you need an app for craft. What does craft do? Craft connects with Envision. Envision's another tool, right? That that way, so that way you can do wireframes and send out the links to your stakeholders to view those wireframes through the browser. I don't think Sketch allows you to do that. And so with Sketch, to order me to get through my day, I need I need craft, I need Envision, I need Zeppelin. I need three apps. Well, including Sketch. Now I have four applications to do all those things, right? With Adobe XD, I don't need any apps. Adobe XD allows me to share prototypes. It allows me to co-collaborate. It allows me to have version control. So I, it allows me to put all my stuff in the cloud so I don't have to have them on computers. Sketch has it too, but anyway. It allows me to have prototypes, send those links out to my stakeholders so they can clickety-click-click. It allows me to send out different links to, to for certain things where they can go in and, re- and review my mock-up and add comments and annotate. Awesome. It allows me to send out links to, to create collections and send out links to my developers so they can go in and do that inspect tool to get that CSS code, to get those text codes, to get those downloadable assets. Boom. And all those things or in one application. That's why I like Adobe XD. And I really like the um, the prototyping tool within Adobe XD. It's getting a little better. Still sucks, but getting better. Figma, I like Figma. I like the way Figma handles their their library. I like fig- the way Figma handles their components. I think they're I think the way Figma handles their components and resizable and auto resizing of components is freaking genius. I like their um, what is it that that the panel? I forget the name of the panel where I can go in and set my um, my shadows. I can set my different colors. I can set all my freaking text and stuff. As far as like creating a design system within that file, I love how Envision lets me create a design system and keep it within that file, and I can have literally everything. And everything doesn't have to be like linked and excuse me, adjusted and all the other jazz. So that's the reason why I like Figma. If Figma could get down, and Figma does, you know, code collaboration, be able to send you links out and other set, all that jazz. I think it's cheaper too. I believe if Figma, if almighty Figma could just get down the um, auto animate feature and the, and the prototyping feature, either um, like XD or better, They'll have my vote, 100%. They'll be number one. But because of that, um, because I use that, because I use that prototyping tool and sharing that link out a lot in my in my job, I can't have it. I can't use that program at the moment. But t- until they can figure that part out and get that, maybe they already have. I haven't have researched in, in a minute, and um, so hopefully they can figure that part out. But until then, I can't I can't use that program at the moment. So for me right now, it's going to be Adobe XD, Figma, depending on what day I'm feeling, could be number one, number two, and then Sketch is last. But at the end of the day, like guys, don't get hung up on tools, don't get hung up on your ego. You know, be a good training partner, <laughs> aka be a good coworker. Coworker, training partner, same thing, man. Same thing to me. Because at the end of the day, if you're a good training partner and you're willing to help others around you get better at the craft that you're getting better at as well, 
that makes you a good person. And the same thing goes for UX. If I'm ever, if I'm there and you're struggling in something, and I help you, and I'm helping you, that helps me, and it helps, and that helps you at the same time because I need to be know, I need to know what the heck I'm talking about to even teach you, right? So going back to jujitsu. Sorry for the podcast. It's very long. I got a lot to talk about. It's been about two weeks since the last time I talked to you guys. Got to get more consistent. And so last week, you know, I was, I'm working on some uh, different, um, a different system. So I'm working on a, a side control system and I wanted to try to drill it with some of the guys and some of the guys, you know, there are a couple of white belts and, and so I'm, I'm showing them some different stuff. They're like, oh man, that's, that's nice, man. That's freaking awesome. This is high level stuff. I'm like in my eyes, I'm like, man, I, I appreciate that, man. Like, I'm getting stoked just being able to teach these guys. And so, like, while I'm teaching them to move, I'm able to see the things that they're not doing correctly. And I'm able to course correct because I know what I'm talking about in that moment. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to teach them how to do the move. And if they do something wrong, I'm able to adjust them and make sure they get the right details to do the move correctly. And that to me lets me know that maybe I'm doing something right, right? So I need to know what I'm talking about in order to even teach you anything. And I attribute that to 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 design as well. Like I need to be able to know what I'm talking about to, to make sure you're even doing the thing that you're doing right or wrong, right? Because if you're doing like, how this move look? Like, yeah, looks fine to me, I guess. But, you know, maybe you don't really know what to look for. And that's what it is. Maybe you don't really know what to look for. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that. I mean, I really, I really, I really like teaching people, man. I really like helping people. Like, I just, that's why I do these podcasts and, and videos. Cause like, maybe you guys can get something out of it. Maybe you can learn something. Maybe I can teach you something that you haven't heard yet. Maybe I can just validate something that you've been thinking about in the first place. You know, that's the reason why I do this, man. Like, that's it. That's, that's why I like doing jujitsu. Cause at the end of the day, like, not only does jiu-jitsu benefit me, but it benefits the people around me, right? It helps pe- the people around me. And I like to take those same, like, you know, philosophies into my to my job as well. You know, this if you're a good training partner and you care, I feel like that translates over to being a good coworker, a, a being a good employee as well, or being a good person on the job, even off the, even off the field, in and off the field, right? Even Even at home. You know, um, you know, there's some people who have those egos who just want to win. But sometimes in life, man, it's not all about, you know, winners and losers. Sometimes it's about just helping individuals get better. You know what I'm saying? And if you get better through that, then that's even better. There's a lot of better betters in there. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, it's uh it's almost Halloween. If you guys haven't yet, go on to uglyunicorns.com. We got we got our T-shirts here. We got Eugene as a vampire here. We also have Eugene as the uh, as a zombie. <laughs> make sure you check that out, uh, uglyunicorns.com. Uh, make sure you check out the YouTube channel. If you haven't already gone to the YouTube channel, make sure you go there, Ugly Unicorns, and subscribe, man. Subscribe. Yo, man, I'm trying to build a community of fresh UXers, uh, UX unicorns, other unicorns out there. I'm just trying to build a community of, of, of designers and positive designers out there who, who need some help, who are looking for some help, who can't find help, who can't find good help. You know, maybe maybe my videos will help you. Maybe you want to jump on the call with me and talk to me or email me or message me, whatever. You can do that, man. Um, sometimes I read the comments. Sometimes I don't. But most of the time, if you guys have a good question in the comments, I might do a video on it or I might just answer you, um, answer you directly because sometimes you need that immediate type of feedback. And if I just I do a video, it takes a couple of days, it might take a week to get out. You're like, oh, my God, you're not to me. What's going on? Is he sick? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm good. But, um, yeah, man, make sure you go to the website. And... Um, if you haven't already, man, like subscribe to the podcast, rate it five stars. I mean, you can find the podcast anywhere that you listen to podcasts right now. Um, you can listen to it through um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, Spotify. Oh, it's funny with Spotify and Shopify. 
They sound so similar. I, I'll get them mixed up all the freaking time. But anyway, on Spotify or anywhere else that you listen to podcasts, man, check it out. Subscribe to it. So that way you get these podcast notifications whenever they drop. And um, yeah, man, what do you guys think, though? I like to hear, I like to hear from my, my, my viewers, um, my listeners. Let me know, let me know, let me know, let me know in the comments. Hit me up through, through the, through the, through the, through the, um, through the website. Man, I can't talk today. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hit me up, uh, hit me up through the website, uglyunicorns.com. You can also go to UX, po- UX Unicorns Podcast on Instagram. I'm there as well. Um, you can hit me up there. There's a lot of plugs in here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like, Hey, go here, go there, go here, go there. Look, go wherever you want to. Make sure you go to somewhere, right? I don't care where you go to hit me out. Just make sure you go somewhere. And um, yeah, man, um, girls and guys, is, is there, if there's anything that you guys want me to talk about, any topic that you want me to discuss, anything that you're worried about, anything that you want to know, let me know and we can work something out. Uh, maybe I'll do maybe I'll do a video, maybe I'll do a podcast, whatever. You know, let me know. But anyways, um, this has been the podcast. I really, I really appreciate you guys for listening along. Hey, hopefully, um, hopefully by next week, or hopefully by the freaking end of the month, my new microphone will be here. I ordered a microphone back in September. It's been on back order for almost a month. So hopefully that'll get here. The audio will be mwah. Crispity, crispity, clean. Yeah, the audio will be uh, way better, way cleaner. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the new setup. As you can see, my screen's cut off in the background, but who cares? <laughs> Still looks pretty dope. Dope saucy. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys for following along. Um, the podcast has been pretty long, but um, I have a lot of things to say. We talked about a lot of things here. Hopefully, just some nuggets in here that you guys... Oh, my God, nuggets. I want some chicken nuggets right now. Yeah, chicken nuggets. Anyway, I hope there's some few things, a few gems, a few diamonds that you guys can mine and take out and, and use. And, and maybe you can, you know, help somebody out along the way. You know what I'm saying? Each one, teach one. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what it's all about, helping out. That's what, that's what I'm trying to build. I'm trying to build a community that helps. Um, if I can help you guys and you guys can help somebody else have that trickle-down effect, that's gonna be awesome. Just remember where you just remember where you got it from. All right, guys. That has been the podcast. I really appreciate <laughs> I really appreciate you guys following on and listening. And like I always say, don't just be the unicorn. Be an ugly unicorn. Peace.